What's up guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host that just ate a lot of spaghetti, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. It was too much spaghetti actually. Too much spaghetti. Alright, this story's called, You Will Give Me My Money Back. Hi! Okay, so I'm an autistic kid, and I love computers and servers, and I like building them, fixing them, everything. Occasionally, I get computer parts or broken computers from friends. I look for really good deals on GPUs and motherboard and CPU combos on marketplaces, and there is a computer company that, before tossing out their old customer hardware, drives, SSDs not included, they call me so I can pick it up. I'm doing this so I can sell relatively cheap gaming computers to kids and also try to make a buck for myself. So this kid contacted me because his friend had bought a computer from me and was really satisfied with his purchase. He told me that he would like a computer for around 500 euros, and all he said that he was playing was some ugly cheap Call of Duty clone. Sure thing, bud. I thought to myself, and we start looking around for parts. Around a month later, I got a hold of an i5-4670K, a SUS Republic of Gamers motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR3, AMD R9290X, this is important for later, some Corsair AIO water cooler that I just removed from my main rig with two new fans, a 250 gigabyte SSD, a one terabyte hard drive, 650 watt mod modular power supply, Bit Phoenix chassis, I uh, don't remember which one, Windows 10 Pro. Even though this kid didn't know much about computers, I still said that I can give him a computer with these specs for 450 euros. He said it was good and I went on building this little beast. Since I knew that I was getting more money than I usually get for computers, I put some extra love into this one. I made custom sleeves for power cables, I routed the cables for amazing airflow, I even put in some extra 100 20 millimeter quiet fans in the front just so it would be nice and cool. Computer was done. I did a 48 hour stress test on the components like I always do. This kid was supposed to pick up the computer after a few days, but he said he couldn't. Luckily, I was going to a friend that lives around 200 kilometers away from me, and from his place, it was somewhat of a 40 minute drive to get to this kid. I drive from my friend's place with the computer and deliver it, and I get my 450 euros plus 20 euros that he said he could give me for delivering the computer. Since he didn't have a monitor yet, we couldn't really test the computer. But I connected the power to it just to see that it doesn't beep or do anything weird from the drive there. I also say that I can give him like a month of warranty and support if stuff isn't working like they should. Around a week later, this kid contacts me and says that the computer doesn't work. I didn't really feel like driving almost three hours one way just to get it to work. I ask him if he connected everything like he should and he said yes. We message each other for over two hours while I'm trying to figure out why it's not even getting power. I ask him if we could start a video call so he can show me what he does to start the computer. This freaking kid is plugging in the power cable. He is then just flicking the power switch on the power supply and says, see, it doesn't work. Add 30 minutes to this while I'm trying to explain to him that the power button is on the side at the front of the case. And he is just, nope, there's nothing there. He eventually finds the button, apologizes for being stupid, and we hang up. Fast forward a few weeks, and he tells me that one of the radiator fans is making weird noises. I don't want to go there again. I send him a brand new fan for the rad, and I even pay for the shipping. He gets the fan, is happy. All done now, right? Oh no. Fast forward five months. He messages me telling me that this GPU is from 2013. I didn't expect an old GPU, and the computer is really slow. Yes, this GPU is from 2013, but in 2017, it was still capable to play games. It still is today. It performs somewhat like a GTX 1060 in 1080p gaming, and since he was playing some crappy COD clone that got 300 plus FPS with that card, I wasn't really worried. Why he experiences that the computer is slow? I have no idea. Since both the hard drive and the solid state drive were brand spanking new. He goes on messaging me saying stuff like, I'm gonna buy a new GPU and you're gonna help me install it. Otherwise you have to come here 
pick up the computer again and give me my money back. I suffer from anxiety and had a bad week, and the fact that he thinks I'm some kind of 24-7 lifetime support just because I gave him a month of support made me really anxious and angry. I was sitting there for around two hours thinking on what to say to not sound like a jerk. I also wanted to help him if he wanted to upgrade his GPU, even after he was demanding this. Then I get a message. Since you're not replying, I am going to your house this weekend. You are giving me my money back and I'll give you the computer. This actually made me feel threatened. I spoke to some friends on what to do and they said that if he comes, they will back me up. A friend of mine apparently had common friends with this kid and had apparently had a talk with his friend about this. My friend is not someone that you would mess with if you wanted to be able to walk afterwards. After he spoke to his friend, this kid never visited me. To people that may think I'm a jerk, the price may have been a bit over the market value, but he could also have done some research of his own. Also, I'm not impossible to haggle with. I've put up computers that people have haggled down 150 plus euros on. At this time, I had no job and my girlfriend and I were really struggling to get food on the table. I was only buying stuff I knew that I could flip for a profit. Hey, hey, there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a profit. Most people who sell stuff online like that do not offer a month of support and warranty. That's a really good deal. Plus, it's paying for parts and labor. Also, you know, uh, they're paying for the services such as support and warranty. Stuff that is not very commonly offered by independent sellers. Alright, this story's called Jailbird Uncle Demands More Monthly Money, Is Denied the Increase, Sues His Brother, Loses in Court, Now Gets Nothing. The title is to tilt your ha <laughs> Bit of a long one for y'all, just a bit of background. My uncle has been in jail off and on for probably three quarters of my life and I'll be 40 this year. Usually, it was just pure idiocy that landed him behind bars. Once, he broke into a house and fell asleep on their couch. Another time, it was something like public drunkenness in Utah on a non-drinking day or something. At that point, I wasn't paying attention to what exactly landed him in jail. It was just an, oh, uncle is in jail again, and move on with life thing. But this last time, he got drunk and beat a man almost to death, sentenced 20 years. Other random facts come into play. Uncle had two kids. Uncle was divorced but failed to pay child support, so had a huge child support bill due. That child support bill? If uncle ever had too much money at once, because his money was watched by the prison system, it could be seized to repay back the child support. Anyway, on to the long story. This went on for about a decade, so a few things might be out of order, but all the key parts are there. So it's the late 2000s, and uncle uncle is already in prison for beating this dude. Then, my grandfather on that side, who'd previously been subsidizing my uncle in prison, had a stroke, and for a few days, it was pretty touch and go. My dad flies out, and it's obvious that if grandpa lives, he's gonna have to go into a nursing home. Grandpa's sister and my dad are there and decide that they need grandpa to get his will together. They have an attorney come to the hospital, and the will gets written, witnessed, etc. Now, yes, my grandpa had just had a stroke, but his mind was still fully there. His mind was good until the day he died. At this point, I have to break to mention two things. One, Grandpa owed Dad about $20,000, so the will was structured to treat that separate somehow. And two, Grandpa told Dad not to give my uncle money in prison. Anyway, in the will, my grandpa left everything to my dad. Nothing to the grandchildren. This comes up later. And nothing to my uncle. My dad and Grandpa's sister actually asked about my uncle, and Grandpa replied that he'd bailed him out of jail so many times, even adding an extra mortgage once, if I recall, and sent him so much spending money for prison that in his eyes, my uncle had already received his inheritance. Now, we were still on speaking terms with uncle after Grandpa's stroke, and even though he was told not to, my dad started sending the monthly spending money, which I believe was 50 then, and after a couple of years, went up to 75. A year later, Grandpa passed. We called the prison to let Uncle know, and in a subsequent letter, he was informed that there was nothing for him in the will. My parents did put a token amount into a bond for him anyway. About three years pass. 
during which time my parents continue to send a monthly stipend to my uncle. Then uncle calls with some excuse for why he needs more money. My parents call Beaver Sausage and tell him that they're not sending anything extra. Uncle gets pushier and my parents finally tell him that they'll cash out the bond they set aside for him. But then there will be nothing for him when he gets out. Uncle takes the money but still demands an increase in his monthly amount. He's once again told no. He's getting free money and if he needs more, he should get a job in the prison. At some point around this time, one of my cousins died. The other died a couple of years ago. Uncle argues that cousin's inheritance should revert to him, arguing that grandpa had to have left some money to his precious grandchildren, neglecting the fact that none of the grandchildren were included. And even if they were, it would have been paid out years earlier. When my parents send ex-aunt money to help with funeral costs, uncle is mad because he thinks that money should have gone to him for grieving or something. Fast forward several months, there have been rumblings of uncle demanding money from other people we know, which is pissing everybody off. But this is the way he operates, and everybody is a tiny bit forgiving because his eldest kid just died. Then ex-aunt forwards us a letter, in which uncle asks her to lie for him and state that there was a previous will by my grandparents that included him. There wasn't. At the time, we're notified that uncle is suing my parents contesting grandpa's will and demanding almost five times the amount of the entire inheritance. Note, he was able to claim indigent status, so filing fees and such were waived. It's at this point my parents cut him off, pretty sure that their own money has been used to buy favors in prison that helped uncle put the lawsuit. Now, the lawsuit was full of ridiculous allegations, claiming that grandpa had been coerced into making a new will while mentally weak due to the stroke, that my parents had abused my grandpa, that the estate was worth far more than it was because of antiques and such. <laughs> old doesn't mean valuable. That my parents were willfully withholding the contact information of family members who would back up his claims. Nope, they begged us not to give him their details because they knew he'd demand money and as many lies as he thought he could get away with. Enter lawsuit number one. Enter lawsuit number one filed in the state grandpa lived in before his stroke and where the will was written. Was quickly dismissed on jurisdiction grounds as uncle didn't live there, my parents don't live there, and grandpa didn't die there because my parents brought him to a nursing home in our state so he wouldn't have to be alone. Enter lawsuit number two. About nine months or so after lawsuit number one, uncle refiled in the state he's incarcerated in. This time, it wasn't quickly tossed on jurisdiction grounds and parents had to get an out of state state attorney. Eventually, the case was dismissed, but without prejudice. Enter lawsuit number three. Almost immediately after the case was tossed in the second state, he sues again in the state parents live in and grandpa died in. Parents have to get an attorney again. This time, uncle gets it in his head he'll win and drops the suit, expecting an amicable resolution because he's sick. But at this point, my parents are done, have been no contact for a while. My dad is pissed and nope, there will be no amicable resolution because F the uncle and his crap. Enter lawsuit number four. About six months after dropping lawsuit number three, uncle sues again. This one finally gets to court. A judge looks at everything, including threatening letters uncle had sent and the letter he'd sent ex-aunt wanting her to lie about another will, etc. And the case is finally tossed with prejudice, meaning no refile. Uncle immediately appeals, but when that finally got to the appeals court, they tossed it pretty quickly. Now the sweet ending. Because all the family and friends watched uncle run my parents through four different frivolous lawsuits because they refused to give him more money, almost everybody has cut ties. And last I heard, nobody was giving him any money at all. Serves him right, what a jerk. He's, he's trying to use his kid's death to milk more money out of people. That's ridiculous, man. 
Alright, this story's called, If you try to haggle at a charity shop, you are a choosing beggar. I volunteer at a small charity shop. The pandemic has hit us hard. I get people are struggling, but we still have bills to pay too. Luckily for us, we have kind donors. Had a lady come in the other day, nicely dressed. Wanted the new with tags handbag we had in the window. But she wanted it for £5. It was £35, branded. Tag said it was over 150 quid. Manager said no. But I need it. I bet I can get it cheaper on eBay. One, no one needs a handbag. Two, we had handbags in for under a fiver, but they weren't brand new. Three, if you need it that badly, buy it on eBay. She continued to argue until she asked me to leave. Had a bloke come in who wanted to buy about 5 99 pence t-shirts. He wanted them all for 99 pence. Had to ask him to leave too, as he was becoming stroppy. Stroppy? What the hell? He said he could get them cheaper online too. If you can get them cheaper online, feel free to buy them online. It gives me a headache if I have to argue with you. Please stop haggling at charity shops. In fact, don't haggle online sailors too, because it's like, oh, if you can get it cheaper somewhere else, then just get it cheaper somewhere else. I'm not gonna lower my price to some ridiculous point just so you can scam me, you dingus. <laughs> This story's called Cherry Picker. I have a cherry tree in my yard. I planted it near the sidewalk because I like the idea of people walking by and helping themselves to a handful of cherries. The other day, I hear a knock at the door. There is a guy, choosing beggar, standing there with a ladder and a five-gallon bucket. Hey man, is that your cherry tree? Yeah, feel free to pick some. Just leave some for me and the neighbors. I see a lot of dudes with ladders during cherry season. Um, what does that mean? Like, how many can I take? Uh, a few pounds would be okay, I guess. I was kind of hoping for more than that, honestly. How much are we talking? Well, they're just gonna rot if I don't pick them, so I was gonna pick them all. I'm trying to do you a favor. I pick them, and my neighbors pick them. They won't go to waste. Take a few pounds, but leave the rest. We go back and forth for a while. He keeps asking if he can pick them all. He offers me a quarter of what he picks, and then a third. Keeps mentioning how he is doing me a favor. He points out that people walking by won't be able to reach the ones up higher in the tree. I eventually agree that he can pick all the ones that he needs a ladder to reach, but ask him to, but ask him to leave the lower ones. This will give him four or five pounds easy. He agrees. I go out a couple of hours later, and he has stripped the lower part of the tree bare, and only left the high branches. Okay, first. First of all, OP, what a nice person. Second, choosing beggar, what a mm, mean word, mean word, mean word. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.